Hi stamping friends, welcome back. Today's share is a simple distressed oxide ink blending background technique and I've overstamped it with the amazing Lavina Silhouette stamps from Craft Stash. I've also included a bit of positive and negative masking to add depth to the finished piece. I'm using the mask paper from Inka Dinka Do and cut it out with the Stitch Circles dies from Simon Says Stamps. You just die cut the size that you need and out of the paper and then you can actually peel off the protective cover on the back and lay it on your work do what you need to do and then when you're finished you can put that backing back on it so you can use it many times over and over again. Today we're playing with fairy tales and dandelions from Lavina. These are beautiful silhouette stamps that I've just recently received. I'm also using the small ivy stamp from Creeping Vine. You can see it here on the background and the ink for today's projects is Broken China, Twisted Citron, Peacock Feathers and Wilted Violet and some blending tools. Adding that mask now and you want to position it over to the right a little bit and leaving enough room for her wings. I'm adding the ink in a circular motion, back and forth works too, and this ink is very forgiving. It's wonderful. It's really easy to blend and you don't have to press really hard to move it around. You want to cover the entire surface and make sure you have a good solid coverage around the mask. Next I'm going to be adding some Twisted Citron up in the right corner and notice I'm using the mask to put my fingers on. Your fingerprints will show up on this ink so you have to be really careful about that. I'm adding some Wilted Violet to the left side of the sky again in the circular motion and kind of working down the left side of the card and I'm just adding a little bit because I do want that blue to still show through. And then I can go back with my Peacock Ink Blender and go over both of those colors and blend them in together. Isn't that pretty? Okay, let's create the ground that our little fairy is going to be on. I tear hills and valleys from a scrap of paper and I'm going to use that as a mask. I lay the paper down over the art piece and I want to add purple ink for my first layer of my ground. So move the mask just where you want it, then start adding the ink. And you want this really, really, really thick and solid. You want to cover the entire thing. And then pick up the mask and move it one way or the other and a little bit higher to do your second layer. You're going to start adding the ink again and this time you're going to pull it from the top down and you want to leave a little blue just above that first mountain that you made and that kind of adds the depth to the picture for you. You'll see as you start doing the second layer, see? And lastly, I'm just going to add one little guy over here in the bottom right hand corner. Again, pulling from the top to the bottom and leaving a little bit of blue showing. And there's my ground. And you want to heat set this. Next I'm going to add a little background noise. I've got that little ivy stamp I showed you earlier and I am using the Broken China ink and just randomly stamping all over my background and notice I'm twisting my stamps so that they're not all in the same direction otherwise they just look all exactly the same. And just work your way around the card. the moon. I have done another piece of cardstock and cut the exact same size circle out of it and I'm going to remove my mask. Um, try not get your fingers all over your art piece. You're going to see when I move that that I got fingerprints all over the side and so what you can do, see right there, what you can do is you can take your blending tool and just very very lightly add a little bit of ink back in and it will cover up your Fingerprints. Okay, back to the reverse masking this time. So I'm laying that piece of cardstock down right over top of my moon. I'm going to start adding some Twisted Citron ink in a circular motion all around it. And then I'm adding a little bit of Peacock Feather around the left side. 
just to add some, you know, dimension, a little bit darker side to the moon. And then I'm going to go back and I'm going to blend it with the citron again. And what I'm doing is I'm lifting it and looking underneath. Sometimes you get a little white halo. So just move your mask down a little bit so that you can add a little bit of the yellow ink in there just so that that white goes. And this time I'm going to use a tissue to hold my piece while I heat set it. I'm using my absorber cloth to take that blue ink off of those little ivies because I'm going to be stamping them in black soon. And I have my fairy stamp ready to go in my Misty. This is the one we're using right here. And you need to make a mask for the wings. So what you do is you stamp it on a post-it note with the wings over top of the sticky part of the post-it note and then cut them out. So place your art piece into the corner of your Misty and add a whole bunch of magnets to hold it in place. And again, I'm using my tissue to get my fingerprints out of there. And I'm lining up that moon with her hands so that it looks like she's holding onto it. And then close the arm of the Misty so that your stamp sticks to the clear top. I'm going to be stamping in VersaFine Onyx Black. Flip the lid back so that you can hold on to the lid and the ink pad at the same time. Ink up the stamp. And then you're going to flip it closed and stamp your image onto your art piece. Gently pull it up. And if you need to re-ink, because this is a silhouette stamp, so there's lots of solid image, sometimes it needs a second go, just to make sure it's nice and dark. Turns out beautiful. Clean the image again, because we're going to be removing that stamp. Pull it off of there. Okay, I'm moving my magnets around because the next one we're going to use is the large dandelion and I didn't clean it before so I have to clean it now and I'm going to add the mask over top of my fairy wings again protecting my work surface and then this is going to allow me to place my stamp over top and when I'm finished stamping it's going to be in the background instead of the foreground so position it where you want, move your magnets around so that it's going to keep that paper nice and in place. Attach your stamp to the arm, ink it up again with the black ink, and stamp your image. Beautiful. Next I want to stamp the small dandelion over in the bottom right hand corner, but you see that the bottom of it goes outside the misty. So I can move my art piece up if I want and use the misty, or I can use an acrylic handle to do my stamping, which I've chosen to do. So I'm moving it onto my work surface and I've got an acrylic handle with my stamp on it. I'm just going to ink it up and I'm going to stamp that little guy right on down there. Just like that. For this card, I decided just to do two dandelion stampings instead of, I think, the six that I have on the other one. I decided that it was a little bit too busy. And now what I'm doing is I'm adding some more silhouettes with the ivy stamp again and the black ink. And notice I'm twisting it again and just kind of stamping it around the outside edge of my art piece. Then I remove my wing mask and you can see the dandelions in the background. Now it's time to do some splattering. You see, if you look closely, there's some gold in the background. Well, this is how I did it. I'm starting with some of the gold out of my Gansia Tambi watercolor set. And I'm just using some water in a well. And I'm just going to pick up a little bit of the water. I'm going to pick up some paint with it and put it back into that inkwell I used yesterday because there's already some paint and some water in there and you want it nice and runny. You don't want it thick. So I'm testing it and then I'm getting ready to start splattering. I'm covering my moon again with my uh, masking piece. I didn't tape it down. I just kind of laid it over top and I start to splatter and then I remember oh I don't want to get the wings and the uh, fairy so I just used my tissue to cover that up and worked my way around splattering some of that gold all over the place and most of my work surface do. And you want to heat set that again or let it sit aside and let it dry. I wanted some white highlights on this too, so I'm using a little bit of white acrylic paint and I'm just squeezing it out onto uh, an old lid. I'm going to apply it with the ends of two paintbrushes. 
And so I'm moving everything out of the way, closing in on here for you so you can really see what I'm doing. And I have a really, really thin and a medium paintbrush end. I'm starting with the larger one and I'm adding random dots all over kind of the bottom portion of my art piece. And if you find it gets a little blotchy, clean the end off with your tissue and start over again. It, it does kind of blotch up and doesn't make very nice circles after that. So now I'm back with the really thin one and I'm adding smaller dots around my bigger ones. And this just adds some interest to the bottom of your card. And I decided that it might be nice to put it up here with the ivy as well. There are little dots with the stamp, so that's what kind of uh, made me do this because it kind of coordinated. And over on the yellowy green side as well. And put as few or as many as you like. I think I'm getting a little bit carried away on the green side here. And then what I did, I went in and did the center of the two dandelions that are in full bloom. And I did five spots in the center of each one of those. And next you're going to see me flip it around to the big dandelion, which isn't open yet. And so I decided just to do the very tips of the little pods because they're not open yet. And so it's kind of like the moon is just shining on the tips of each of those little seed pods. And you've got to use a really, really tiny paintbrush end uh, to get these. But it looks really cool when it's all done. And I'm just touching up a couple that got kind of blotchy. Checking my work. Time for a little glimmer. I'm adding clear Wink of Stella to the wings of my fairy. And I'm also going to do the outside edge of the moon. And you'll notice that I squeezed my brush before I started. Uh, be very careful about how hard you squeeze your brush. I'm about to run into trouble. I start with my moon and I get going. And I turn the corner here. And then all of a sudden I get this big blob come out. And then you're going to see I work like a mad woman trying to to blend that around before it gets uh, too big and blobby. And it took a few minutes. I ended up having to go and get a different brush to finish it off. Um, but it is a beautiful, beautiful effect. Isn't it pretty? Last artsy thing, we're going to splatter some clear water onto our moon with our reverse mask in place. I'm picking it up with a tissue, which also picks up some of the ink and gives it kind of that molted, uh, cratery looking uh, moon that we like in our artwork. And I did just a little bit, and it turned out very cool. Isn't that nice? Make sure your art piece is dry and we can start putting it together. Uh, my card base, as Simon says, stamp deep purple. I've got a gold mat and a black mat. And um, I've got a PDF file on my blog for you with all the measurements. I'm using the quarter inch score tape. I'm starting to attach my layers together. So the art piece is going on to the black mat and then that's going on to the gold mat. And then finally, I'm going to attach it to the purple card and make sure that your card's opening the right way before you glue that little guy down. I've listed the supplies below in my comments and there's also a link to my blog where you can download a free PDF for this project. <music>